First of all, to, to talk about um, this, this period, because it has been kept silent for so many years, more than 30 years, because the uh, French uh, Defense Ministry uh, had put the secret defense on the nuclear tests, and they opened it only um, like three, four years ago, they decided to open it up and, and say, okay, we did something that was wrong or um, that causes negative effects on the planet, on the people that were involved in those nuclear tests. Um, but I don't know, but I think there are no feature films, uh, documentaries, yes, but no feature films that have been made on that subject. And as it is still you that you can have access to all those archive documents um, I thought it's the right moment to talk about it and also because um, for me there is the, there is a link um, is it nuclear test but nuclear tests they were made to arm France or to arm Iraq, I mean, if, if uh, Iran, if Iran wants the nuclear bomb, um, it's, it, it is an attitude um, that I myself cannot understand. How today is it possible to still believe that you can defend your country having the nuclear bomb? Because if, if you use it, I mean, it's a total disaster. And um, but the same same thing, you know, when very young kids, 18, 19, 20, um, like the young American soldiers that are sent to Iraq or Afghanistan, what they have to live, those young kids, not knowing exactly why they are there, what they have to defend, which arms they're using. Um, I think they are in the same distress today than those boys in the 70s and that sadly enough things are not changing so i thought let's talk about this yes yes and, and their fragility and this age where you don't know what you are going to become you know, will you find the love of your, of your life? Will you have children? What will be your career after? Because probably they, they were going to stay one year or two years in, in the French Marine, but that's not their life, you know, it's their military service. Um, I think it's very interesting to, uh, to talk or try to understand um, all those doubts. Um, because I, I personally think it's the most difficult period of of a lifetime, you know, now I'm, I'm more than 60 and um, I always loved my life and I still love my life but I really think 16, 20, this was difficult, kind of painful, even though I was in a happy family and with brothers and sisters and all that, but this insecurity of what will my life be? Um, it's, I think, very, very uh, dangerous and, and difficult moment turn in life. I didn't know him, but um, I was a um, jury member in a festival in Sao Paulo, and uh, there I met Shedomir Kolar. Uh, who is from Yugoslavian origin, uh, as that film, yes. And um, he had received a screenplay from Danis. Danis had done two, or two shows, two documentaries, something like that. Um, and knowing that he had finished his uh, film studies in, in Brussels, he said, uh, well, I have here a screenplay, do you want to read it? And maybe, who knows? And we didn't know each other, Shedomi and myself. We met at this festival. He was also a jury member. And Marco Müller was also in the jury. So Marco also read the screenplay. And I read the screenplay at night and I, I thought, wow, this is one of the best screenplays I've read. You know, it's so strong and so funny at the same time. So I said straight to Shedomir, no problem, you know, I'll, I will try to find money in Belgium for, for this film. And of course, uh, because Danis had studied in Belgium and all that, it made it easier. 
and he had even married a, a Belgian woman and had the Belgian nationality. So it made sense, and uh, and then we we became really, really deep, deep friends, and now we keep co-producing. Um, you know, they co-produced my uh, further film before. Um, between you know, um, Si le vent soulève les sables, the one I did before, and uh, they co-produced this one as well. I co-produced the Danis again. So now we exchange all the time, and it's great fun.